Okay, it's that time again. Here we have the latest selection of great everyday carry gear that has found its way to the channel. So let's get into it. Okay, first up we have the Bit Bar 2 from Big Idea Design and I'm a big fan of this company and everything they produce is always really well designed and engineered, although that does come at a price. This is the second generation of the original Bit Bar and it's the same size and shape as the original but has an improved easy to use mechanism which works like this. You simply slide up the button here and eight quarter inch bits become visible. You grab the one you want and let go and then you have it to use. And it goes in one of two quarter inch sockets, one at the front of the tool, which is where you would normally use it. But then for this version of the bit bar, there's also an additional angle here. And this allows you to apply more pressure and more torque. You can put your thumb on the angle there. And this, in my view, really elevates this tool over the original. Then when you finish with the bit, you simply put it back in there and the bits are held in magnetically. As before, we have a lanyard hole on this tool and also a deep carry pocket clip here, which can be removed. And this tool also comes with this leather sheath and also a quarter inch extension piece. And that can go in there like that. Although I do think a better option for an extension bit if I was carrying this in one of my kits would be something like this Leatherman ratchet driver here. And that fits perfectly with this tool, as you can see. And this would make a great combination. The bit bar two, as we've seen, comes with eight tool grade bits included, but of course you can always pick from the millions you have kicking around in your toolbox instead. This is made from grade five titanium and here are the dimensions. It weighs 130 grams, which is 4.6 ounces, and it's also available in black and has a lifetime warranty, ships internationally for free and costs $120. So not cheap, but this is a really practical and capable compact screwdriver. And this is definitely going to find its way into one of my kits. And as always, if you'd like more information about any of the items featured here, I'll have links in the description down below. Here we have a new addition to the Phoenix flashlight family. This is the E35R. Now the E range is Phoenix's classification for everyday carry with the emphasis on simple and fast operation. And cutting to the chase, this is for those who want a simple to use flashlight that can go very bright with long run times in a very compact body. This uses a 21700 size battery and here are some other flashlights that utilize the same size of battery and as you can see straight away the Phoenix is very compact when compared. In fact it looks more like the size of flashlight you would associate with something like this Olight Warrior 2 here which uses a much smaller 18650 battery. And this is what makes the E35R stand out in a very crowded market. A 21700 size battery in here in a light this small. And that battery means a 5000 milliamp hour capacity and that means long run times. For example, on the lowest 50 lumen light level, which is bright enough to get you home, it will run for 50 hours on a single charge. Beyond that 50 lumen light level, there are four brighter levels with reducing run times. The highest light level being 3100 lumens which is very bright for a light of this size and that will run for a short time before dropping down as the heat builds. So like most flashlights of this type that brightest light level is just for short bursts when needed. This uses a TIR lens which is a combination of reflector and lens and that helps to keep the light compact but because of that it can't really compete with the range of something like the TK20 here. The E35 has a range of 260 meters which is still pretty decent but the TK20 at the same maximum output level of 3000 lumens goes up to 475 meters so over 200 meters more range just because of the difference in the reflector. The operation couldn't be more simple really simply press 
and hold to turn it on and then press the same button to step through the five different light levels and then press and hold to turn it off. What you miss though is direct access to the brightest light level without stepping through the other levels to get there. And that generally means you'll overshoot and go around a couple of times before you decide you've arrived at the brightest light level. There is no moonlight mode for very low light level multi-day run times and the side switch used here is hard to use with gloves on and can be hard to find in the dark and in a hurry. I prefer a tail switch for a light like this but that would increase the size and the size for me is the unique selling point of this light. What you do have is direct access to strobe. You simply press and hold until it comes on and you have a quick lock with a double press. Charging is via the USB-C socket under this flap. We also have a magnetic base, a one-way pocket clip and a battery level and charging level LED which is located in the center of the switch. This has an IPX water resistance rating of eight, which means it can be submerged. And as with all Phoenix lights, this is well made and should prove reliable. So in summary, no tail switch, no access to turbo and no moonlight mode, but simple to use, very bright, long run times and very compact. Ideal for when size does matter. The price is not clear at the time of filming as it's not yet available, but I expect it will be around the 70 to 80 pounds or dollar mark. This is the Elko from James Brand, a simple but functional keyring pocket knife. And great design is always at the heart of products from this company. And that is evident here with this rectangular styling. I particularly like the blade shape, which makes for a substantial blade relative to the size of the knife. And we can see that if I compare it with a Victorinox knife of a similar size. And you can see straight away that the blade on the Elko is significantly more substantial, both in depth and also in width. So clearly the Victorinox has multiple tools and therefore additional functionality, but if it's the blade that's your primary concern, then the Elko here is much more usable. The steel used in the Elko is a Sandvik 12C27, which is a good all round knife steel with a good balance of properties such as hardness, edge retention and ease of sharpening. I'm not a massive fan of this color, but as you can see, there is a broad range of colors and material choices to suit most tastes. The scales here are anodized aluminum and the pivot point uses phosphor bronze washers, which are more resilient than the standard washers and a pointer to hidden quality. We have a nail nick here, which is cut out of the blade, which is really nice and a very effective half stop for added safety. This is a slip joint non-locking knife with a blade length well under three inches, 1.74 inches in fact, so legal to carry in the UK and I expect most other parts of the world. The spring tension here on this blade is reassuringly high, adding to the feeling of security. In addition to that blade, we have here a pry bar on the end and that doubles as a key ring holder, also a scraper, bottle opener, screwdriver, and obviously a pry tool. This is clearly not a budget knife, but if you want a great quality and a great looking key ring knife that will last, then this is a very nice option. This one was a Christmas present. Thanks, Jamie. And here in the UK at the moment, it's freezing. And I mean, literally freezing. So I've been really keen to give this a try. This is a hand warmer from Zippo, better known for these. And it's powered by this. There are two sizes of this to choose from. This is the smaller one, which is good for six hours. And then there's a bigger one, which is good for 12. So you fill this up with flammable liquid, set fire to it and stick it in your pocket. What could possibly go wrong? Sounds dangerous, but actually it seems, well, not dangerous. You fill it with this doll's house sized fuel can. 
and the amount shown on here should be good for six hours of continuous heat. There's no flame involved here other than when lighting it and this thing on the end here is a catalyst and in here we have wool and we have platinum, not much I assume, and then something called palladium which I thought was something they mined on Pandora. Now you can buy a replacement catalyst and each one can be used I believe about 60 times. It's quite hard to know when this thing is lit as there's no sign of a flame or anything burning so I just assumed it was after applying a flame for a few seconds and then I put it in my pocket in the supplied cover as instructed and hey presto it got lovely and warm in my pocket. Now if only Prince Harry had had one of these. Ah! So this is the first time I've used this and I think it ideally needs to be in something like a pocket to hold in the heat and then that heat builds nicely. With this size I imagine one in each pocket would be a great option or one in each glove and this fits really nicely in the glove where the palm goes. So I've got this now across the palm and that is a perfect place for this. So much so that I've just ordered a second one so I can have one in each glove and that will be brilliant for me when it gets cold. The larger version of this hand warmer sounds like a good option and lasts twice as long but from what I can see the catalyst burner is actually the same size as the one in here so I doubt it gets hotter and obviously it won't fit in my glove. This makes a great change from having to remember to put yet another thing on charge and there's something more earthy about fueling this up and lighting it. And if you need it in a hurry you can get it up and running in just a couple of minutes whereas an electric alternative might require a few hours to recharge. The biggest downside to this is that when it's going there's no off switch so you just have to let it run out of fuel. Not ideal but a price worth paying I think. And speaking of the price expect to pay around £20 in the UK and quite a bit less than $20 in the US. Next up we have another new item from Big Idea Design and this is the TI Pry Bar. Now when you list the most popular everyday carry items a pry bar is usually right up there after the usual knife, pen, wallet, keys and flashlight especially for those who are more hands-on fixing, maintaining and making. This also doubles up as a large flathead screwdriver although you won't get a huge amount of torque with this. This is also apparently TSA approved so theoretically it can be carried in hand luggage on a flight in the US. However I don't see this being allowed by the CAA in the UK where even screwdrivers are banned from hand luggage. It's made from grade 5 titanium which means it's as strong as steel but close to half the weight and it does feel a lot lighter than it looks. Also feels really nice in the hand in this stone washed finish but there's also a tough DLC coated option if you prefer black. We have here a very tough and deep carry pocket clip which can be removed if needed and also a lanyard hole. The pry end runs to a decent point, it's beveled on both sides and it has this ridged tip and that gives a little bit extra grip in use and can also be used a little bit like a file. We also have these chamfered edges here and that provides a little bit of extra grip in use. Then rather unusually we have this. Built into this pry bar are a set of three fidget magnets and I have to admit it's a bit addictive once you start playing with these. And these magnets can be removed if you'd rather have just one or two. Now for me this is a bit strange. I'm always focused on practicality and I would prefer to see something a little bit more relevant and useful. For example a smaller pry tool say that magnetically fits into this space or something similar. Now that might be just me and if you carry this with you regularly it might be just what you're looking for. And with or without the fidget factor this is still a great pry tool. The price for this is around £85 or dollars so you are paying for the design and the quality and also the fidgety elements on offer here. If you're the sort of person who worries about losing or dropping their everyday carry gear when out and about then this might just be of interest. These are retractable gear tethers sometimes marketed as retractable badge holders or keychains. 
Now, in a previous life, I had retail stores all over the UK called, would you believe, The Gadget Shop. And we had lots of lockable glass cabinets full of Victorinox knives and Leathermans. And our staff used retractable key holders to avoid losing their keys or leaving them for others to find. But these things are also great for gear. Again, to avoid loss and also for activities when dropping gear can be a real problem. And that might be something like fly fishing, for example, when you might be using pliers and if you drop them in three foot of water, you're gonna be in a bit of a problem. Or what about hang gliding or paragliding? I'm pretty sure you wouldn't want to drop your phone when floating about a thousand foot up in the air. So if you have gear that you need access to but don't want to lose or drop, then one of these could be ideal. These are from a company called MN Garista and one is made from ABS and it weighs in at 40 grams or around 1.4 ounces. And then we also have a heavy duty zinc alloy version at 75 grams or 2.7 ounces. Both of these extend to 31 inches and can retract eight ounces in weight. And just to test that out, I've got a Leatherman Wave here, which weighs in at eight and a half ounces. Now I'm gonna attach it to this lanyard loop here that you didn't realize you had on your Leatherman Wave. So here we have the Leatherman Wave attached. And as you can see, it does a really good job of hauling this in, even though it's heavier than the quoted eight ounce weight. Both versions have a carabiner at one end, ideal for attaching to a shoulder strap on a backpack or perhaps a belt loop, and a split ring key ring and badge holder at the other. Just remove the one you don't need. The cable used on these is steel with a nylon coating, and both of these come in at a very reasonable 12 pounds or dollars. And if you'd like to see some more gear videos like this one, then just click on this link here. But that's it for this one. Thank you as always for watching, and I hope you can join me in the next one.